fighter, Alexander Usyk. The talk of the town is he'll be fighting Glowacki for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. A fight that many people have been talking about and are looking forward to. Why are so many people looking forward to this fight, Uncle Bashir? Uh, I, I, in my mind, as I said to you previously, that the cruiserweights, 200-pound fighters, are the heavyweights of yesteryear. They are the most dangerous pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world today. They are the most dangerous pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world today. There's no other division that can offer the excitement that the cruiserweights can. Because with the cruiserweights, you're walking through a minefield. If you step on one of those mines, you're as good as dead. These guys can crack. Look at the last three, four weeks of cruiserweights. Every cruiserweight fight that you've had in the last three or four weeks ended in knockouts. Bellew, Macabo, a dangerous puncher. Macabo's a dangerous And most people thought that Macabo was going to knock Bellew out. Bellew out, and look what happened. You know, Marius Breeders. You know, you look at uh, um, Macronelli. Macronelli got KO'd. Got starched in a round. Yes. yes. Hard punches. Uh, Lebedev, you see what he did to the, the, the other champ, the IBF champion. In two rounds, he got him. These guys are dangerous, dangerous punches. So, yeah, I can understand the excitement about, um, you know, these two guys fighting. Uh, American cruiserweights got to up their game. You know, I saw Michael Hunter versus uh, uh, Isaiah Thomas. And uh, Mayweather's guy, uh, I forget his name, the, to, uh, Tabini. I okay. saw him, you know, I saw him. They got up the game. These guys are good boxers, but I'm afraid boxing is just not going to just get you over in the cruiserweight division. Or maybe it can. It remains to be seen. You know, these guys are big, big punches. They're dangerous punches, and they're coming to get you out of there. They're not coming to play around. These guys are coming to get you out of there. So, yeah, there's a lot of interest in this fight because Glavaski is a, is a really tough guy. He's a really resilient, tough guy. And he's there to fight, and he means business. And uh, Usek, Usek wants the belt. He wants it, and I see that they they won't fight us nowhere, but we have to go to Poland to get it. Are you concerned that Usek hasn't fought in a while now, and the next fight's going to be a world title fight? Nah, I'm not concerned about that at all. Bring Usek up. is a young man. No. Nah. No. Nah. Timing, speed. Nah, we'll have we have good spot and sparring. We gotta go to the mountains and um we gotta go to the mountains and uh we're gonna prepare. We're gonna have the best sparring partners that money can buy. We're gonna bring those guys in and we're gonna go way to the way deep in the mountains of Ukraine. And we're gonna prepare. Any reason why in the mountains Pardon me? Any reasons why in the mountains? Apart from the, air, the obvious, the air. Well, the air, the height. We're going to go deep into the mountains. I mean, high into the mountains, you know, it's for stamina, for the lungs, and for to avoid all distractions. I don't want people just coming through the neighborhood, dropping by to uh, communicate with them, talk with them. I need this undivided attention that we're going to stay in those mountains until it's time to fight, until it's time for us to go into Poland. Because this is the big one. This one is for the world title, and we can't slip up. So I want to bring the best Usyk I can to the to Poland to take because we're gonna to have to take that title. Nobody's gonna give us that title. We're fighting a Polish guy in Poland. Nobody's gonna give it to us. We've got to take it. So I want to prepare my guy to go in there and um, beat the champion. How do you see the fight? I, I see the I see the fight, and I'm saying this respectfully. I see it being a tough fight, um, but I see the fight ending in a KO. I see uh, Alexander Usyk stopping Glavatsky somewhere between seven and ten. You know, I, I see it like that. It's going to be a really tough fight. Both of them may 
both of them might visit the canvas once or twice in the fight. But I, I, Alexander Usyk is a special quality, and I think that he'll come through. I think we'll win the title. That's what my thinking is. If I think any other way, then I shouldn't be there as a trainer. I think that Usyk stops him. I know the quality fighter that I have. Uh, I, I know the kind of attitude we got to take into Poland. But if we got to go deep into Poland and take the belt, get on the plane and come out of here with the, with the championship intact. Cunningham showed flaws in Glocky, even though he's an older man now, and he, he certainly showed Glocky can be hurt. I wouldn't say Cunningham's a puncher in comparison to someone like Usyk. So that's something... Say it, say it again, we had an interruption. Sorry. Uh, I saw that, that the Cunningham fight showed flaws in Glocky. He was open to counters. His inside game wasn't the greatest. Um, and, no, uh, no Glocky makes mistakes. He makes mistakes. He makes a lot of mistakes, but he makes up with it. Make, he makes up for it with his heart and his willingness and his punching power. Yes, he's got great punching power. And he's a gambler. He put his chin out there when he he's, comes he's in. He's consistent. Comes... He's consistent. Yeah. He's consistent with that. So you've got heart, guts, and I don't. I don't raise boxing skills that highly. He, you know, he reminds me of. He reminds me of uh, Arthur Spilka, the heavyweight. Yeah. 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 He's rugged. Yeah. He's a rugged tooth and nail fighter. He's rugged. But when you've got a style like that, the classic boxer can get out fought because of the heart and can grind a, a, a classic boxer down who may lack heart. May not want to get into the trenches later in the fight. So guys like well, my game, I'm the kind of trainer. Mm. I've invested my entire life in the training boxes. Mm. And I stay close to what boxing implies. Right. B O X I N G. I'm not looking for a guy to go out there and get to a Donny Brook with him. He's got to box. If he wants to beat Usyk, he's got to be able to box. I'm I'm teaching a guy how to box, and we'll be, we'll take the title. My thinking is we'll take the title, but we'll do it with smooth, calculated boxing. You know, we'll do it with smooth calculated. Not no Donny Brook. I don't want no slugger match. I want him to be able to box. You know, smart. Calculated boxing. While you're at it, let's talk a little bit about I'll take 10 punches to land my one. It's not a good philosophy for me. Like I said, I'm a boxing trainer. But I'm a teacher long before I become a trainer. I'm teaching my guys how to box. You know, so you box to get what you want. Taking 10 punches to land one is not a good philosophy. It makes for a very short career. You might end end up in a loony bin because your brains would be spilling out through your eardrums. But you find these guys exciting to watch. These guys who've got great chins and you line their chins. Well, that's because they don't have to take care of them when their career's over. They don't have to change their diapers. They don't have to feed, feed them Gerber baby food every day. The, the wives and the girlfriends, they're the ones that got to take care of those guys. And most of those people don't stay with them. The guys wind up in nursing homes and stuff. Nobody's around. Nobody, all the cheering and bells, you know, the cheering has stopped and uh, all the applause has stopped and they wind up in a nursing home walking on their heels. That they'll, you know, I mean, look at the great boxer like Wilfred Benitez. Look where he's at. You know, he wound up alone, you know, at his mother's house now. Great boxer like that there wound up. You know, <clears throat> countless other boxes. I can I can go through the who's who about ex boxes who wound up with speech slurred. You know, they don't, half of the time they don't know where they at. They take a medication for the rest of their life. So yeah, you don't want a guy beaten beaten beyond uh, repair. So my game is to teach my guy how to box, the boxing etiquette, the language of the sport, the boxing. B O X I N G boxing. That's what I'm teaching. Okay. So we talked. To, let's talk a little bit more about Usyk and this fight against Glowacki. A dangerous fight. What does Usyk have to do this? Time? That's why the fight. That's why it's exciting because it's dangerous. How do you know you've got the real goods there? I mean, you can watch him in sparring. You can watch him. You know, how do you know you've got you've got the real McCoy? Because he hasn't really been in against. He hasn't had a real, real test like he's got here. So he's fought guys who he's expected to beat. And now he's fighting Cloacki, which is 
Well, you know, you can't dismiss the fact that this guy has won the World Amateur Games. You know what I'm saying? He's won the World Amateur Games. And in doing so, and he got the the Olympic gold medal he won, you know? It's it's a it's a man. He's a, he's won the European amateur games, the World Games, the European amateur games, and the Olympic gold medal. And he's had over three hundred amateur fights. Some of them was five round fights without headgears. Yaka Lomachenko, for example. Yeah, Lomachenko got got three hundred fifty amateur fights, and he, what he got six six professional fights and won world two world titles. So you can't dismiss that valuable experience. Of course. He's had valuable experience to prepare him for this time. So I don't think that he's going to be affected. I don't think he's going to be affected. You know, I sit down, I communicate with him, I talk with him all the time. If he wants to do it, he wants to be there. He wants to be that guy. So, I, you know, Levasky, like I said, is a tough guy, but you know, we'll we'll formulate a plan to overcome what he does and try to knock him out. Do you think they'll do a twenty four seven on this HBO style or uh, all axis? They should. Uh, I believe one of them. I believe HBO or one of those guys gonna, is going to do all access. Really? Yeah, I think that one of the two are going to do all access because I think. Uh, HBO's covering it. I don't. I think HBO is one of them is going to do all access. I expect that. That'd be good. It'd be great to get you on. Get get you on the uh, on the on the screen. As they do. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good, so I can get a chance to to have a a stage to, to show what I can do. That'd be fantastic. You deserve Uncle Bush. You really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm patient. I've been, if I wasn't patient, I wouldn't be here now. I've been laboring all these years, so I just want to be able to do a good job for my boxer. I want to go out here and I want to win the world title. And and this is not a gimme fight. This is a fight that we'll have to earn our keep. If you win this fight, does it make you the best cruiserweight in the world? I can't hear you. If you win this fight, does it make you the best cruiserweight in the world? What did you say? I said, if you win this fight, does it make you? Yeah, I, I think that I think that most of the experts and most of the critics recognizes uh, Usek as the best cruiserweight in the world at this present time. You know, most people in the sport recognizes Alexander Usek as the man to beat in the cruiserweight division. And I don't want that to go to either of our heads, me as a trainer or him as the boxer. We have to continue to work and try to get better. Because when you read press clips like, you know, the ones that people are saying that he's the best and this, I tell them don't get caught up in that. They keep on working. Because I've seen people get distracted. You remember they were calling Donald Curry the best in the world when he fought uh, Lloyd Huntington. You know, you can't get caught up in the press. You got to stay focused and continue to try to get better. Glavatsky is a very tough guy, and he's not going to—he's not going to uh, give up that title. He's going to fight. He—he's going to fight to keep that title. He—he he wants to fight. He wants to be the guy to beat Usyk. Because if he beats Usyk, he can say, "I'm the best in the world. I'm the guy to beat." We can't let that happen. Tony Belly's win against Macabu. Your thoughts? Very exciting. Very exciting win. Very exciting win. Very exciting fight. They were fighting. That was the best I've seen Belly fight, to be honest. He wanted it. He wanted it. I take my hat off to him. He did a very, very good job. Very good job. And he he went in there. He did the do. Because... Most people thought that Makabu was going to not fail you, fail you out. And Bellu said, no, no, no. And he knocked Makabu out. Put him to sleep. I think I'm getting interference with your speakers, your he headset. Yeah. 
That's it, yeah. You good? Yeah, better. Wow. Um, Belly vs. Usyk, your thoughts? That's a tough contest. I told you, the Cruiserweight division, pound for pound, is the most exciting division in the sport of boxing. Because everybody can punch. Everybody can punch in the division. But it's not always about punch, is it? About what a boxing ability as well. Well, you can have you can box, but you can only box for so long. Some punches are going to be exchanges, right? Even if with a boxer, you're going to be able to take it because you you can box for so long, but some somebody's going to test you. You know, I'm not going to have two guys standing there, my guy standing there just trading punches. But I'm saying, even with even with a good boxer, you're going to have to take some punches. And those punches can tell the difference. Those punches can make the difference in a in a serious fight. You know, they, they can make the difference. Your thoughts on the whole Tony Bellew, David Hayes scenario? Well, Tony's trying to make money. I don't have nothing against that. He's trying to make money. I think it's a big risk. You know, he's sitting in a good place as the WBC champion. Um, I think that the Cruiserweight division is going to even get better than what it is. I think that tomorrow, tomorrow, that the Cruiserweight division is going to be the, the, the division to be in because they're the heavyweights of yesterday. It's going to be an exciting division because everybody's got to be thinking that <clears throat> I can't compete with these big guys. I've got to go down. So the guy is 214, 213. He's got to be thinking, i got to take this weight up and go down. You know, Stevie Cunningham is going back to cruiserweight. Eddie Chambers is going back to cruiserweight. Eddie Chambers is out of the heavyweight division. He's going back to cruiserweight. Could, <clears> he's like, gonna compete. could someone like Brian Jennings make the cruiserweight division, or is he still too big? I think Brian is too big. I think he's too big. His last fight, what, 225? Yeah. yeah. It's a long climb. I think, he's, I think he's caught between a rock and a hard place. He's going to have to stay a heavyweight. <clears throat> I don't think he can make cruiserweight and still be strong. David Hay? Well, David Hay is comfortable at, at uh, heavyweight, so he, he, he's not going to come back. He's too old for that. He's put on too much muscle. You know, he's got his mind made up. He's going to be heavyweight. So David Hay, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna hang out with him. He's not going to go back to cruiserweight either. Six foot three. I mean... You saw he struggled against Klitschko, a guy who had a good jab. Just put him at the end of a jab. But he punches so yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah, he can live there. You know, when you're slick enough, you can live there, you know. This is why Maurice Harris was able to survive so long in the heavyweight division because he was so gifted, so slick, that the big guys really couldn't lay hands on him, you know. And he would outpoint them. Chris Bird was so quick, so slick. I saw a, a scenario uh, Chris Bird versus Ken Norton. Like so many people chose Norton, but I don't think Norton could have beat Chris Bird. I think Chris Bird would outbox Norton the way Jimmy Young did. And they gave the fight to Norton, but Jimmy Young outboxed him, boxed him. So when you can box, you can live with in the land of the dinosaurs. But when, when, you, when you're not that good about when you're not a special boxer you're going to get caught and when you get caught you'll realize that holy moly i should be in the cruiserweights you know you get hit your arm i spoke to eddie chambers eddie told me that this uh the last kid that he fought the football player yeah washington he said that washington hit me in my arm in the third round of that fight and he said in the sixth round i could still feel my arm throbbing and he said it wasn't a really a bad intention tension punch. He said he just threw the punch and it landed, but I could still it wasn't hurting me, but it got my attention. And on the point of Eddie Chambers, he just <clears throat> just wasn't there for the night for whatever reason. Yeah. Eddie Eddie Chambers has had a lot of nights like that. He's had a lot of nights like that where he just couldn't connect the dots. <laughs> 